Wellington Dam is located a little southwest of the inland town of Collie. As it's an irrigation dam, people are allowed to access the water, unlike dams that are reserved for drinking water. One of the most popular activities around the dam is camping, and there are three main campsites. The northern section of the dam is surrounded by National Park, and there are campsites at Honeymoon Pool and Potter's Gorge. Honeymoon Pool is mainly for tents, while Potter's Gorge caters for all types of campers. Camping in the National Park campsites is organised. The sites are numbered, they have to be pre-booked, there are fees to pay and rules to follow. The southern end of the dam is surrounded by state forest, large sections of which are made up of timber plantations. While camping at the southern end is freeform, with no fees involved. Before we start looking at the various campsites individually, let's have a look at some of the history behind the dam. The construction of the dam dates back to the years of the Great Depression, during the 1930s. Work began on the dam in 1931, and initial construction was completed by 1933. The demand for water for irrigation was so great that the height of the dam wall was increased in 1944 and again in 1960. Today, the wall stands 34 metres tall and is 366 metres long. The dam was constructed of large concrete blocks that were poured directly from chutes suspended from two large towers. Crushed rock from the on-site quarry was mixed with sand, cement and water to make the concrete. The dam is capable of holding 186 million kilolitres of water when full. The dam initially did supply drinking water to some inland towns and a pipeline was connected to Narogen in 1956. WA's second hydroelectric power station was built 400 metres downstream of the wall and can supply power for up to 1,500 homes. The water in this dam has been historically higher than other dams that rely solely on rainfall. Additional water was pumped into Wellington Dam from local coal mines. The dam is now affected by salinity. This is caused by tree clearing in the catchment area and the water is no longer used as a drinking water supply. The Harris River Dam was constructed in 1990 to supply fresh drinking water to surrounding towns. Over time, the salinity levels in Wellington Dam are expected to decrease, and it may, once again, become a valuable source of drinking water. The Wellington National Park surrounds the north end of the dam, and covers 17,000 hectares. The terrain is hilly and intersected by streams, making it very attractive and it's popular with many visitors. Honeymoon Pool is located downstream from the dam wall and its location ensures fresh cold water even at the height of summer. The water flowing from the dam into the Collie River comes from deep under the dam surface and is therefore refreshingly cold all year round. The pool and surrounds are most picturesque and the campsite is regularly voted as one of the best in the whole of WA. Campfires are generally permitted at Honeymoon Pool but only from April to November and only in the fire rings provided. Due to its popularity, Honeymoon Pool is often crowded and noisy during peak times. There are two other tent-based campsites very close to Honeymoon Pool. Stones Brook Camp is on the other side of the Collie River. Campsites at Stones Brook are more spread out and there is a camp kitchen available. Campfires are not permitted at any time at Stones Brook. The third campsite in this immediate area is called Jelcote Rapids. Like Honeymoon Pool, campfires are permitted but only in the designated communal fire pit 
and also from April to October unless otherwise signposted. This campsite is also meant only for tents and swags and is more suited to bigger groups than the other two camps. Dogs are not permitted at any of the campsites in Wellington National Park. Campsites must be pre-booked and this has put an end to people turning up after a long drive from Perth only to find that the campsites are full. Generators may be run at any of the campsites between 8am and 6pm but please be considerate of other campers and keep noise to a minimum. These campsites are ideally suited to people with tents or swags and do not cater for caravans or motorhomes. If you have a caravan or motorhome then you can camp at Potter's Gorge. Potter's Gorge is a large campsite located along the shoreline of Wellington Dam. There are more than 50 campsites and facilities include pit toilets, camp kitchens with barbecues, seats and tables and rainwater may be available seasonally but is not intended for drinking. Campfires are permitted in the fire rings only from April to November. Bring your own wood if you wish to have a fire because collecting wood in the National Park is not allowed. Generators are permitted between 8 and 6 p.m. Bookings are absolutely essential these days and should be done online before you arrive. As with other campsites included in this video, swimming and kayaking is allowed and fish can be caught in the dam but you will need to have a freshwater fishing license. Other activities include bush walking, bird watching and finding wildflowers during late winter or early spring. Water skiing was once allowed in Wellington Dam but this has now been banned and vessels allowed to access the water are limited to kayaks and canoes and other vessels with a maximum of six horsepower engines. A vessel exclusion zone extends 200 meters from the dam wall. Water skiing is allowed at Lake Kepwari, which is on the southeast side of Collie Town. We also have a video about Kepwari, so if you want to check that out, have a look for a link in the description below. Free camping is available at the southern end of Wellington Dam and can be accessed through a variety of bush tracks. Most people enter this area via Kelly Road but there are plenty of other options. Camping here is currently free but the onus is on campers to keep the area clean and tidy as we could easily lose access to this wonderful place if it's not looked after. If the campsites in the National Park are all booked up, you're still likely to be able to find somewhere to camp along the southern shores of the dam. You do need to be self-sufficient and this means having your own toilet facilities and anything else you might need for an extended stay, as there are no facilities of any kind in this area. Tracks into the southern end of Wellington Dam vary considerably in size and accessibility. Most are going to be suitable for four-wheel drives, but not all will accommodate caravans and motorhomes. <laughs> 